Heal the world. Make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying if you care enough for the living. Make a better place for you and for me. Hey everybody, Lady Cheryl here. I'm going to give you a quick walk around the food forest and then I'm going to share some of the specific fruit that I'm growing. You would never guess by the appearance of my front yard that I'm growing a food forest in my backyard. So let me show you what I got growing. Okay, let's get started. You're looking at my methylene plums. I can let them get a little bit riper, but I didn't want the birds to get them. They're very sweet. Now, you're looking at my Chandler strawberries. Again, I don't want the birds to get them, and we're getting ready to get a lot of more rain. And last but not least, I want to share with you my jujubes. They're like little dates, super, super sweet. These won't be ripe until about August. I'm always growing seeds. So right here, you're looking at my okra and my eggplant that I'll be growing in the fall. Here in this pot, I'm growing my miho satsuma. It's doing good every day. I look at the little tangerines and they're getting bigger and bigger. Right here are my peach trees and nectarine tree. And then I'm gonna walk over here. And here I'm in the greenhouse. You can see that all of the tomato plants, pepper plants, and okra are growing like crazy and I have beans over there in a the basket and some strawberries some ever bearing some new ones that I bought this year and as a backup I have a couple pepper plants here and over here my fig tree part of these survive okay and here are more figs and a pear tree here and another pear tree here. And I, here is my big laurel tree. Some more zinnias, they're all over the food forest. And I have in this raised garden bed, I have some comfrey. And here is a wild sunflower that Miss Irene sent me with some uh, Mexican petunias in the same pot. And you can see where that big tree is growing over there as well. And we have parsley that's getting ready to go to seed. And begonias and their morning glories. They were real pretty, but it's in the evening time and they're going down. And we have some Japanese sorrel, a lot of banana plants, zinnias, marigolds, uh, dianthus, basil. Going to seed because you guys know I told you. Collect your seeds. It's just like putting your own money. Then I have some parsley. Let me see. Back over there. Can't get in there. Right there. And those uh, well, the sunflowers over there that I've already grown. And then we have more comfrey surrounding this mulberry tree. And I really believe in having a lot of comfrey. And for the first time, I am growing uh, some dahlias. They were given to me, the bugs, by Turf Therapy, and I bought some on eBay, and they are beginning to flower. I can't wait. And these are supposed to be very, very big, so I'm excited about that. And I have an elderberry tree up here that I'm giving to my daughter. It's in this container. Okay, and you saw that I made a video on how I plant my sweet potato slips. Something's been eating them, but I've been giving them some neem oil, water, and do soap. Okay, and they're going to go grow up this trellis, and then I'll take you to another area, okay? Here's an update on my uh, wheelbarrow gorilla cart that I turned into a herb garden. There was a bug right there. Somebody told me they can't squish them, but I can. I used to couldn't. But after I started growing the food for us, <laughs> I got over that fear of bugs. 
here are some more sweet potatoes that are going to climb up this trellis. It did well last year, so I thought I would do the same thing this year. And by the way, that's the mulch that I'm going to put in the pathways. Um, it was on sale for five dollars, five bags for only ten dollars. So I said, well, in the areas where I'm not growing any food, I can replenish them with this mulch. Here I'm growing some echinacea coneflowers. And you see I still have impatience and the baskets and petunias here. This came back, I was very surprised. Um, this milkweed that attracted the monarch butterfly. And here is something I recently uh, planted, some blackberries. And guys, look at this sunflower. Now I save these seeds. I'm gonna go back to the greenhouse and I'm gonna show you how big the flower or the seed head, whatever you wanna call it, how big it got. But this bad boy, two of them, and actually it's the third one growing right here, it's over 10 feet tall. Over 10 feet tall. And they're getting ready to bloom, but I can't get way up there. And as you can see from my last video, the tomatoes are doing good. I try to keep that aisle clear, that pathway. And they're, the tomatoes are just loaded in these two garden beds. Now I'm going to show you another Here area. Are the gooseberries that Brian and I planted today. Here are two pepper plants. Actually, it's three. Because I think after I filmed uh, me and Brian transplanting them, um, I added another one. But these plants were on sale at Lowe's on clearance for a dollar because they were eaten up by bugs. You still can see some of the holes in the leaves and they look a little sick. And these are some peach leaves that I did a little pruning today and I just filled that up over there. Now I'm standing on the outside of the greenhouse and this is that head of that sunflower. And as you can see, it's the same type, but it didn't get as, as tall in the greenhouse. I have tomatoes galore. I'm going to go in a little closer so that you can see that I've been harvesting them when they get, um, you know, almost right. And I put them on my kitchen window, window seal. But I've said this before, I'm amazed at how the tomatoes in the greenhouse were transplanted before the ones outside in the raised garden beds and the ones outside over there are doing much better. Here are my strawberries, or some of them at least. Let's go out. And uh, I harvested them this morning. And they're doing really, really well. I have more strawberries and other grow boxes around the food forest. Here is my Texas Red Star Hibiscus. I tied it up like I told you guys that I would. And I haven't gotten around yet to cleaning up some of the peppermint. And I use it as a repellent for mice and deter uh, rats or anything of that nature. I put it, the uh, mint all around my, uh, all around my uh, rain barrels. And here are those plums that I was telling you about. I, I ate some of them guys and they're super sweet and they are not even ripe. So I know that the Metley plum is a winner. And I have two more trees right over there, Metley plums. They had plums on them, but they didn't survive the um, windy era. It just wasn't meant to be. But I think this one survived and held on to more plums because it had a break with my old shed in the back and then the greenhouse. And these were the last two apple trees that I put in the ground and they are doing well and they are loaded with fruit. And I think some of the fruit out on this tree that I see here, I'm gonna really have to get out here. I'm gonna wait and see what the wind and the rain is gonna do because this is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven eight nine ten ten apples that's just too close all on the tip of a branch so i'll be taking some of that out here's my american persimmon is a yates persimmon it has a few pieces of fruit on it i don't think it's going to last again i got to clear this walkway out here 
Well, this is my favorite tree. This is the Fuyu persimmon. And it's loaded with fruit. And even though you see down there, and I showed it to you before, it drops a lot of fruit. It still has a lot of fruit on it. So, we'll see. So, here is the back of those two Nepali plums I told you about. And right over here, I have beans. And I mean, they are growing like crazy. I had to come out here and put extra drainage holes because, you know, of all the rain. And I just showed you these a couple of days ago. And I told you that it will be probably about two weeks or ten days. Man, it's going to be about a week. And I'm going to be able to harvest all of these beans. And there's beans over there. Strawberries here. Strawberries here. Swiss chard and zinnias. Marigolds. And this buttercrunch lettuce is going to seed. And then I have right over here, I have another uh, brown turkey fig that uh, died all the way back, but it's coming back. Oh, I'm going to stop right here because I don't want to make the video long and I'll bring you part two of the tour of the food forest. And I'll be sure to include the trees I didn't show you today. So I want to thank you for watching this video. You know that I love you and God loves you too. Please remember, grow your own, eat your own. It's not hard. You could do it.